and I will be responding to the claim that beauty pageants have a negative psychological impact on the self-esteem of children and young women in society made by Bridget. The opponent's um, secondary claims were beauty contests set an unrealistic and superficial standard for beauty, young girls are unprepared to handle the issues of beauty pageants, and it catalyzes issues with confidence from an early age. So my responses are going to be um, that Bridget fails to provide whole information, that young girls can use the competition to voice issues, and that um, the subclaim that it catalyzes issues with confidence from an early age is very prom problematic. So going back to the first one, where Bridget fails to provide the whole information. She, the speaker does not know how many children participate in the beauty pageants. So according to st um, Statistics Brain, approximately 2.5 million girls compete in more than 100,000 beauty pageants each year in the U.S. If there were very few girls and children participating in these contests, there would not be sufficient effect to be controversial. Secondly, uh, the speaker misleadingly umbrellas the term beauty pageant. There are actually two uh, types of beauty pageants, the glitz pageant and the natural pageants. The glitz pageants focus solely on appearance, appearance and are the, only, are the ones often criticized for sexualizing young children. However, there are natural pageants for children under the age of 13 years. These are the pageants where false eyelashes, hair pieces, buffet, buffet teased hair, heavy theatrical makeup, fake teeth that um, Bridget called flippers, acrylic nails, dark spray tans, colored contacts, and tooth pointing are all prohibited. Um, and in these competitions, girls compete in interviews where personalities emphasize um, promoting the inner idea of inner beauty. There are no swimsuit contests. Girls are to act and play their age, that of young girls. And family participation is encouraged in activities to promote, to promote wholesome quality time. Secondly, young girls can use the competition to spotlight um, and voice their issues. So instead of being unprepared, they can prepare themselves for the issues of the real world. So uh, we have Mackenzie McFaulner, a senior, uh, a senior in her senior year of high school, she became Miss Powdersville. She says, my cousin has Asperger's disease and my uncle has slow learner's disability. So I've become really interested in mental disorders. Seeing them have to struggle daily with discrimination and things they have to, do, have to face because of something they can't help has really impacted my life. I really feel like I'd like to make a difference in helping those with mental disorders through spreading awareness and possibly getting earlier di diagnosis in the schools. It has been a lot of work, but it has been so rewarding. I've made a lot of appearances in the local community. I've been able to visit schools and volunteer in special needs classes. Working side by side with them has just been really fun. So she's been able to do this due to the uh, spotlight she's gotten from the beauty pageants. Lastly, the subclaim that beauty pageants catalyze issues with confidence from an early age is redundant to the main claim. She quotes Dr. Carlton Kendrick that beauty pageants are to blame for sexualizing children sexualization of females. However, in a published study done by researcher Sarah Mernon, a social psychologist at Kenyon College in Ohio, she states, this, this, she did a study in which they went through children's offerings of 15 national retailers from high-end stores such as Nyman Marcus to inexpensive stores such as Kmart and Target. All of the clo clothing were sized and marketed for toddlers to, to preteen children. The researchers asked independent adult readers to judge 5,666 clothing items for whether they revealed or emphasized a sexualized body part, such as the chest or buttocks, and whether they had sexy characteristics, such as slinky material, leopard print, or sexualizing, sexualized writing. The readers also looked for, uh, they also looked for, uh, sorry, I lost my face. Oh, for childlike characteristics such as frills or butterflies. Of all the clothing items, 31% had sexualizing features, the researchers found. Most of them, about 86%, had childlike characteristics combined with sexy characteristics. 
Average Comey Kids was the worst offender, with 72% of clothing featuring a sexualizing aspect. Nyman Marcus boasted about 38% of sexualized clothing. Child-only stores like Jim Brady tended to do well, though older girls might think those stores are as babyish, Mormon said. Target was one of the better stores with 80% of their girls' clothing falling in the childlike category. So it's not just beauty pageants that affect the females, it's overall the media, um, clothing, and everything around us. So um, <clears throat> not only that, but in the same article cited in the speech of, of Bridget's speech, a 19-year-old competitor, Rachel Slauson, Miss Provo, USA 2015, said she's tried to develop healthy habits cutting out junk food and soda, but doesn't believe in the word diet. She credits the pa beauty pageants uh, competitions with helping her learn to eat well and exercise. In that same article called uh, high, The High Cost of Beauty Pageants, Kim Gravel, the star of the show Kim of Queens, about pageantry on TV, the TV network Lifetime says she's had young girls with eating disorders or who are overweight and feel they're not perfect. So she often works to help contestants feel comfortable in their own skin. This pageant coach says that there is a reformed effort to change that and encourage body positivity. So in conclusion, not all pageantries are awful or detrimental to the uh, to the self-esteem of children. Thank you. It got a little complicated at the beginning because you remind us of what the advocates' claims are, then you preview what your claims are, then you go back to the advocates' claims to respond to them one by one. So it's probably a little bit uh, double dipping more than you need to do. Just remind us what the claims are and then make the arguments as you get to each one. That's probably simpler. On the first point, um, I, th I think you suggest that there's a problem with the way the advocate uses the evidence because they don't have they have incomplete information, and that may be true. But it seems like your information is incomplete as well because you describe a huge number of people who are involved in a lot of pageants, a hundred thousand pageants, two point five million girls involved in those pageants. So I don't think that that sounds like it's a small number. It sounds like it's a fairly substantial number. But you suggest that the different that it's important to differentiate between the glitz pageants and the natural pageants. I said okay. And what percentage participate in the glitz or the natural? That we don't get. So you're kind of guilty of making the same problem uh, for yourself that you claim that the advocate had here. Uh, if you're going to make this argument about the natural pageants, I think it would be helpful to know that that's a substantial part of the pageant process, that a lot of kids participate in those kinds of things, that they're less likely to run into those issues or they're more likely to have opportunities to do those kinds of pageants. I think that's missing on that argument. On the second point, I don't think your point, your point is basically a counterclaim arguing that there are benefits that occur from the pageants that the uh, that the participants get a chance to speak up. I don't know that it really addresses the argument that the advocate presented. Um, maybe their argument and your argument could simultaneously be true because there's not really much discussion of what the advocate said on this point. On your counterclaim though, you do suggest that there are benefits of being in a pageant and participating and being able to speak up on behalf of variety issues. I think that's a good counterclaim. Like I said, I'm just not sure that it um, Dis denies the claim that the advocate's making. On the third point, on the sexuality issue, I was having a hard time figuring out until the very end why I was getting this long list of the stores and the study that's being used and the all the intricacies of how they classify the clothes. I'm wondering, what, what is the point of this? What is the point of this? And it wasn't until the end when you finally said, so this is a problem because the, the sexualization is not the pageant's fault, it's the way clothes are marketed or it's the way you know, designers do these kinds of things. I'm going, okay, so this is a cause-effect argument. In other words, the sexuality issue is not a result of just pageants, it's these other kinds of things. You want to make that claim first because, I, like I said, it made no sense to me why I was getting all this evidence until you made that claim after you'd presented all the evidence. So I, it would be a lot clearer if it was the other way around. All right, thank you.